Chapters 1 through 4 of the Gospel according to John. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to John from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 1 through 4. Chapter 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him nothing that exists came into being. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness, in order that he might give testimony concerning the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he existed that he might give testimony concerning the light. The true light was that which illumines every man by its coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into existence through him, and the world did not recognize him. He came to the things that were his own, and his own people gave him no welcome. But all who have received him, to them, that is, to those who trust in his name, he has given the privilege of becoming children of God, who were begotten as such not by human descent, nor through an impulse of their own nature, nor through the will of a human father, but from God. And the Word came in the flesh, and lived for a time in our midst, so that we saw His glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, sent from His presence. He was full of grace and truth. John gave testimony concerning him, and cried aloud, saying, This is he of whom I said, He who is coming after me has been put before me, for he was before me. For he it is from whose fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No human eye has ever seen God. The only Son, who is in the Father's bosom, he has made him known. This also is John's testimony, when the Jews sent to him a deputation of priests and Levites from Jerusalem, to ask him who he was. He avowed, he did not conceal the truth, but avowed, I am not the Christ. What then? they inquired. Are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? No, he answered. So they pressed the question. Who are you? they said. That we may take an answer to those who sent us. What account do you give of yourself? I am the voice, he replied, of one crying aloud, Make straight the Lord's way in the desert, fulfilling the words of the prophet Isaiah. They were Pharisees who had been sent. Again they questioned him. Why then do you baptize, they said, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize in water only, John answered, but in your midst stands one whom you do not know, he who is to come after me, and whose sandal strap I am not worthy to unfasten. This conversation took place at Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him, and exclaimed, Look, that is the Lamb of God who is to take away the sin of the world! This is he about whom I said, After me is to come one who has been put before me, because he was before me. I did not yet know him, but that he may be openly shown to Israel is the reason why I have come baptizing in water. John also gave testimony by stating, 
I have seen the Spirit coming down like a dove out of heaven, and it remained upon him. I did not yet know him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, The one on whom you see the Spirit coming down and remaining, he it is who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. This I have seen, and I have become a witness that he is the Son of God. Again the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, when he saw Jesus passing by, and said, Look, that is the Lamb of God! The two disciples heard this exclamation, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned round, and seeing them following, he asked them, What is your wish? Rabbi, they replied, Rabbi means teacher, where are you staying? Come, and you shall see, he said. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they remained and spent that day with him. It was then about ten o'clock in the morning. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John's exclamation and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, that is to say, the Anointed One. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You shall be called Cephas, that is to say, Peter, or Rock. The next day, having decided to leave Bethany and go into Galilee, Jesus found Philip and invited him to follow him. Now Philip came from Bethsaida, the same town as Andrew and Peter. Then Philip found Nathanael, who said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law wrote, as well as the prophets, Jesus, the son of Joseph, a man of Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? replied Nathanael. Come and see, said Philip. Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, and said of him, Look, here is a true Israelite, in whom there is no deceitfulness. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Before Philip called you, said Jesus, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Rabbi, cried Nathanael, you are the Son of God, you are Israel's King. Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, replied Jesus. Do you believe? You shall see greater things than that. I tell you all in most solemn truth, he added, that you shall see heaven opened wide, and God's angels going up and coming down to the Son of Man. Chapter 2 Two days later there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus also was invited, and his disciples. Now the wine ran short, whereupon the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Leave the matter in my hands, he replied. The time for me to act has not yet come. His mother said to the attendants, Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now there were six stone jars standing there, in accordance with the Jewish regulations for purification, each large enough to hold twenty gallons or more. Jesus said to the attendants, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Then he said, Now take some out and carry it to the president of the feast. So they carried some to him. And no sooner had the president tasted the water now turned into wine than, not knowing where it came from, though the attendants who had drawn the water knew, he called to the bridegroom and said to him, It is usual to put on the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then that which is inferior. But you have kept the good wine till now. This, the first of his miracles, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee, and thus displayed his glorious power, and his disciples believed in him. Afterwards he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, and his brothers, and his disciples, 
and they made a short stay there. But the Jewish Passover was approaching, and for this Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple the dealers in cattle and sheep and in pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. So he plaited a whip of rushes, and drove all, both sheep and bullocks, out of the temple. The small coin of the brokers he upset on the ground, and overturned their tables. And to the pigeon dealers he said, Take these things away! Do not turn my father's house into a market! This recalled to his disciples the words of Scripture, My zeal for thy house will consume me. So the Jews asked him, What proof of your authority do you exhibit to us, seeing that you do these things? Demolish this sanctuary, said Jesus, and in three days I will rebuild it. (laughs) It has taken forty-six years, replied the Jews, to build this sanctuary, (laughs) and will you rebuild it in three days? but he was speaking of the sanctuary of his body. When, however, he had risen from among the dead, his disciples recollected that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the teaching which Jesus had given them. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the festival of the Passover, many became believers in him through watching the miracles he performed. But for his part, Jesus did not trust himself to them, because he knew them all, and did not need any one's testimony concerning a man, for he of himself knew what was in the man. Chapter 3 Now there was one of the Pharisees, whose name was Nicodemus, a ruler among the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God. For no one can do these miracles which you are doing unless God is with him. In most solemn truth I tell you, answered Jesus, that unless a man is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How is it possible, Nicodemus asked, for a man to be born when he is old? Can he a second time enter his mother's womb and be born? In most solemn truth I tell you, replied Jesus, that unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever has been born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever has been born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished at my telling you, you must all be born anew. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So is it with everyone who has been born of the Spirit. How is all this possible? asked Nicodemus. Are you, replied Jesus, the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? In most solemn truth I tell you that we speak what we know, and give testimony of that of which we were eyewitnesses, and yet you all reject our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and none of you believe me, how will you believe me if I tell you of things in heaven? There is no one who has gone up to heaven, but there is one who has come down from heaven, namely the Son of Man whose home is in heaven. And just as Moses lifted high the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, in order that everyone who trusts in him may have the life of the ages. For so greatly did God love the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who trusts in him may not perish, but may have the life of ages. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who trusts in him does not come up for judgment. He who does not trust has already received sentence, because he has not his trust resting on the name of God's only Son. And this is the test by which men are judged. The light has come into the world, and men loved the darkness more than they loved the light, because their deeds were wicked. For every wrongdoer hates the light, and does not come to the light, for fear his actions should be exposed and condemned. But he who does what is honest and right comes to the light, in order that his actions may be plainly shown to have been done in God. After this Jesus and his disciples went into Judea, for there he made a stay in company with them and baptized. And John too was baptizing at Anon, near Salem, because there were many pools of water there, and people came and received baptism. 
for John was not yet in prison. As the result, a discussion having arisen on the part of John's disciples with a Jew about purification, they came to John and reported to him, Rabbi, he who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, and to whom you bore testimony, is now baptizing, and great numbers of people are resorting to him. A man cannot obtain anything, replied John, unless it has been granted to him from heaven. You yourselves can bear witness to my having said, I am not the Christ, but I am his appointed forerunner. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, and the bridegroom's friend who stands by his side and listens to him rejoices heartily on account of the bridegroom's happiness. Therefore this joy of mine is now complete. He must grow greater, but I must grow less. He who comes from above is above all. He whose origin is from the earth is not only himself from the earth, his teaching also is from the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. What he has seen and heard, to that he bears witness, but his testimony no one receives. Any man who has received his testimony has solemnly declared that God is true, for he whom God has sent speaks God's words, for God does not give the Spirit with limitations. The Father loves the Son, and has entrusted everything to his hands. He who believes in the Son has the life of the ages. He who disobeys the Son will not enter into life, but God's anger remains upon him. Chapter 4 Now as soon as the Master was aware that the Pharisees had heard it said, Jesus is gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize them, but his disciples did, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. His road lay through Samaria, and so he came to Sychar, a town in Samaria near the piece of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and accordingly Jesus, tired out with his journey, sat down by the well to rest. It was about six o'clock in the evening. Presently there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus asked her to give him some water, for his disciples were gone to the town to buy provisions. How is it, replied the woman, that a Jew like you asks me, who am a woman and a Samaritan, for water? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. If you had known God's free gift, replied Jesus, and who it is that said to you, Give me some water, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, she said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, so where can you get the living water from? Are you greater than our forefather Jacob, who gave us the well, and himself drank from it, as did also his sons and his cattle? Every one, replied Jesus, who drinks any of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks any of the water that I shall give him will never, never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become a fountain within him of water, springing up for the life of the ages. Sir, said the woman, give me that water, that I may never be thirsty, nor continually come all the way here to draw from the well. Go and call your husband, said Jesus, and come back. I have no husband, she replied. You rightly say that you have no husband, said Jesus. For you have had five husbands, and the man you have at present is not your husband. You have spoken the truth in saying that. Sir, replied the woman, I see that you are a prophet. Our forefathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Believe me, said Jesus, the time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship one of whom you know nothing. We worship one whom we know, for salvation comes from the Jews. But a time is coming, nay, has already come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father with true spiritual worship, for indeed the Father desires such worshippers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must bring him true spiritual worship. I know, replied the woman, 
that Messiah is coming, the Christ, as he is called. When he has come, he will tell us everything. I am he, said Jesus, I who am now talking to you. Just then his disciples came, and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. Yet not one of them asked him, What is your wish? Or, Why are you talking with her? The woman, however, leaving her pitcher, went away to the town and called the people. Come, she said, and see a man who has told me everything I have ever done. Can this be the Christ, do you think? They left the town and set out to go to him. Meanwhile the disciples were urging Jesus. Rabbi, they said, eat something. I have food to eat, he replied, of which you do not know. So the disciples began questioning one another. Can it be, they said, that someone has brought him something to eat? My food, said Jesus is to be obedient to him who sent me, and fully to accomplish his work. Do you not say, It wants four months yet to the harvest? But look around, I tell you, and observe these plains. They are already ripe for the sickle. The reaper gets pay and gathers in a crop in preparation for the life of the ages, that so the sower and the reapers may rejoice together. For it is in this that you see the real meaning of the saying, the sower is one person, and the reaper is another. I sent you to reap a harvest which is not the result of your own labors. Others have labored, and you are getting benefit from their labors. Of the Samaritan population of that town, a good many believed in him because of the woman's statement when she declared, He has told me all that I have ever done. When, however, the Samaritans came to him, they asked him on all sides to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Then a far larger number of people believed because of his own words, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe in him simply because of your statements, for we have now heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. After the two days he departed and went into Galilee though Jesus himself declared that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When, however, he reached Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him eagerly, having been eyewitnesses of all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they also had been to the festival. So he came once more to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water into wine. Now there was a certain officer of the king's court whose son was ill at Capernaum, Having heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he came to him, and begged him to go down and cure his son, for he was at the point of death. Unless you and others see miracles and marvels, said Jesus, nothing will induce you to believe. Sir, pleaded the officer, come down before my child dies. You may return home, replied Jesus, your son has recovered. He believed the words of Jesus, and started back home. And he was already on his way down when his servants met him, and told him that his son was alive and well. So he inquired of them at what hour he had shown improvement. Yesterday, about seven o'clock, they replied, the fever left him. Then the father recollected that that was the time at which Jesus had said to him, Your son has recovered and he and his whole household became believers. This is the second miracle that Jesus performed after coming from Judea into Galilee. The End of Chapters 1-4 through 4 of the Gospel According to John